It's free, cheap, and sleazy. Ooh. Let's increase our carbon footprint. Dollar thirty-nine a liter. Woo! That's cheap gasoline. Let's put some carbon into the air by filling up the car. You saw right through it all. Oh, I could not fake it. No matter how I tried. Ooh, you cured my head. Hey, tubers. How y'all doing? Figured I'd do another video while I'm driving. And why am I doing it while I'm driving? Because I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> but at least I'm an honest lazy bastard. I actually got to do a bunch of grocery shopping because we're going to hit a massive cold snap for a few days here. And I want to be stocked up and I don't want to have to drive in the snow. Anywho, let's get to the uh, meat of the matter here. RVing is bad for the environment. And anybody who tells you contrary is dropping a whole lot of horse hockey bucks on you. <laughs> if you've ever walked behind a horse, you know what a horse hockey puck is. <laughs> so yeah, I own an RV, so what's the deal? I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible person, yeah, I'm, I'm killing the environment. <laughs> I think you guys are all adults, so I think you can handle the truth. And the facts. So let's get to the facts. <laughs> the reason uh, living in an RV is bad for the environment is your carbon footprint is still astronomical. <laughs> Not that I gauge my own carbon footprint. I don't. I don't care. That's the beauty about being middle-aged. I'm gonna die soon. I don't care. <laughs> You guys ever wonder what the carbon footprint for a nine mile uh, per gallon RV is on a 3,000 mile trip, which could be like a coast to coast trip? You guys want to know what that is? I crunched the numbers for you so you don't have to look it up. It's around three tons. Three tons of carbon right out the tailpipe. Just for one 3,000 mile trip. <laughs> of course, if you have to go back home and do another 3,000 miles, you can double that to six tons. That's a lot of tonnage out the tailpipe. If you did that same trip with the Honda Civic, it'd be less than a third of that, <laughs> of course. Which gets to the whole root of the matter. People don't give a crap about their carbon footprint. People just do this. <laughs> the reason people drive a Honda Civic is to save money. That's it, they don't give a crap about the carbon footprint. Few of them might bark about it a bit, but the reality is they don't. Same with these eco-warriors in their RVs claiming that uh, they're doing the world a big service by living in an RV. <laughs> it's not true, folks. These uh, wealthy neoliberals in their Class A's, they don't even put their thermostat down at night. <laughs> they're busy towing a <laughs> Cadillac Escalade behind their Class A diesel pusher. <laughs> they don't give a shit about it. Oops, drop the S-bomb. They don't give a crap about their carbon footprint. They might say so, but they're consuming just like the rest of us. And by the way, <laughs> I noticed that uh, they don't avoid the south in the winter. No. Do you guys know that there's a lot of coal plants out in the south? <laughs> That's how they make electricity, folks. They burn coal or they burn natural gas. Or, like the Palo Verde uh, nuclear generating plant in western Arizona, they use nuclear. Don't see any of these neoliberals avoiding Arizona because they don't want to be plugging their RV into that power grid and consuming that nuclear generated power. <laughs> now, I for one think nuclear is pretty clean compared to many of the alternatives, with the exception of maybe hydroelectric which we got here in uh, Western Canada.
much the cheapest and easiest way to make electricity is to just force water through a dam. It's worked for a long time, continues to work quite well. But, like I said, don't see these eco-warriors refusing to plug in their uh, RVs into campgrounds that uh, generate their power in, with nuclear or coal. <laughs> it's how convenient. It's very convenient. It's all so convenient. You guys know how much electricity an RV uses plugged in for a month? It's a lot. Plugged into a 30 amp connection, you can pull up to 3,600 watts in an hour. Do the math. Over 24 hours a day, 30 days in a month. I've actually lived in apartments that I used less electricity than I do living in my RV. It's a straight goods, folks. Now, I'm not trying to say that you can't actually live carbon-friendly or carbon-neutral in an RV. You might be able to do it. I'm going to tell you the only people that are actually doing it. It's called those broke-ass people that ain't got no money. They're not running their furnace at night because they got no money to run their furnace. They can't afford propane and propane accessories. No, they cannot. And they're not driving willy-nilly all over God's green earth here because they can't afford the gas. So, thumbs up, broke-ass nomads. You're doing your part for the planet because you can't afford to do anything else. Which brings me back to my original point. People don't give a crap about this stuff. People are only motivated by personal economic gain. That's why we got capitalism here in the Western world, folks. Because it works. And there's an incentive for you to save money if you save energy. Makes perfect sense. You don't have to be an eco-warrior uh, nomad. <laughs> To know these self-evident truths. So what do you guys all think of the uh, eco-warrior nomads? They're doing their part for the planet. Oh, Sammy. I got Sammy with me. She's, she's even pissed off about what I'm saying. Ain't that right, Sammy? Now I get a kick out of some of these RV dealerships that talk about how owning an RV is really good for the planet and it's a lower carbon footprint for a vacation. Now, the way they typically compare this is to say, hey, if you take four people in your family and you fly off for a vacation, stay in a nice resort, rent a car, okay, I can see how the carbon footprint would be bigger doing that, especially if you go far. Now, I get how these RV dealers uh, pull this off, because they say, if you got a family of four, and you put them on an airplane, you fly them from, say, Seattle to Honolulu, and you stay in a nice resort with a pool, and you rent a car, your carbon footprint will be more doing that for a week or two weeks or even a month than it would be for in an RV for a week or two weeks or a month. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And the cost of RV ownership, if you're just going to use it for a few weeks a year for a family vacation, it doesn't just end there. So dealerships are always motivated by using whatever propaganda they can to actually sell their units. Makes sense to me. But don't always believe what they're saying because there's always a little bit of malfeasance involved in how they uh, justify their argument. So I'm going to do some shopping today and I'm going to go back to my RV and be a horrible person and increase my carbon footprint. And in fact, when I go into the store here and they ask for me for uh, bags, I'm going to say, of course I want bags. It goes into the landfill. That's why they call it a landfill. It must be filled. I'm not making this up, folks. I know I'm a horrible person. I'm still avoiding the... Uh, voting police. The voting cops are still out to possibly arrest me for taking my voting selfie ballot picture. <laughs> so anyway, put your comments down below about what you think about RVing being a green or eco-friendly or any of that bull hooey. Let's hear your opinion about horse hockey pucks. <laughs> I have arrived at my destination. 
beautiful sunny day here. A little cold, but like I said, we're heading down to minus 17 in a couple days, so I better get provisioned up. I do have lots of propane for my propane accessories, so I'm not going to be cold. Thank goodness. So in the meantime, folks, it said put your comments down below. I'll talk to you soon. Over and out. I left you in the car, and nobody stole you. Do you know why no one stole you from my car? Because you're not cute enough. Yeah, you're not cute enough. Maybe if you work on looking cuter, one day somebody might steal you from my car. Okay, Sam, you work on that.